All right, you're welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and we're still talking about the referendum. So are you convinced whether to vote no or yes, or are you still confused about the whole, you know, chaotic nature of the conversation happening in the media, um, you know, concerning the two sides as well, and all the other people who are saying, well, vote yes, vote no. What is it even about? And so today, uh, continuing the conversation, we had the Deputy Minister uh, for Local Government, Obi Amwa, Honorable Obi Amwa, and he joins me in the studios. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. I'm uh, sure I you had so much headache. Oh, not necessarily. Yeah? It's part of the work. It's part of um, um, information and education yeah. and drive. Mm. Uh, but I always want you to add MP Equiapim South. MP Equiapim South, please yes. forgive me for that. But yes, I've added it. In fact, I'll put it down and make sure I mention it as well. Good. But let's talk about this referendum. Over the week, we've had a number of personalities come into the studios. They have given their concerns and all of that. It's quite interesting that a lot of them are expressing fear over the political party participation in the local level um, elections. Now, I would just want to read something because I know the NDC released some 10 reasons why every Ghanaian must vote no. Mm. And one of their first reasons was the fact that it will avoid the needless political divisiveness and rancor at the local level and rather promote unity and cohesion at the local government level. So does it not bother you that people are scared that it will bring well, a lot of chaos? <coughs> well, in the in first the place, I have to thank you. Yeah and other media houses for this kind of publicity. More or less, it's, it's free publicity. Yes. In the sense that on that day, it's not only about referendum. Mm -hmm. It's also about the assembly elections yeah. and the unit committee elections. So I think that the light the media is throwing on this um, whole situation should encourage more people to decide to go and vote on 17 December. Yeah. Even if they want to abstain for a referendum. There's still the assembly elections and unit committee elections. Mm -hmm. They all be held in one day. And I think that if we sustain this kind of publicity, people should be more aware and then get to the polls on 17 December. Because the local okay. governance system is also a very critical thing for us. Now, as to whether um, there's rancor, mm -hmm. hatred, division among parties, so it should not be sent down. Um, with all due respect, I think it's a worn-out argument. Okay. Every time people want to discredit multi-party democracy, these are the arguments that they use. When well, this country, when we got to a time, um, we were told from way back mm -hmm. that because of divisions in multi-party system, there should be a one-party state. We've practiced yeah. one-party state in this country before. But thankfully, the Constitution now says clearly that parliament can never pass any law to impose one party system on us. Mm -hmm. So we've passed that stage. The soldiers came in, they said, oh, politicians, they divided so much, we the soldiers will bring people together. So champions time, we had Unigov. We even went for a referendum and they said no had won, but yes, said they won. And then the revolution, 31st December, when they were asked, when are you handing over? They said, hand over to whom? And for 11 years, we didn't have a party system. Yeah. Thankfully, since 1992, we have a party system. And if we have all agreed that's multi-party system yeah. that we should practice for us to have our freedom, our development, and our democracy, it's, it's a bit sad if we would bastardize multi-party system and say that it's so bad that you should just send it down. The okay. only thing, the only thing that hasn't reached the local level is elections. Mm -hmm. Because we have multi-party at the local level. And people are not killing each other. Mm. If you go to the district, we the new patriotic party, for every polling station, there are now almost 30,000 polling stations. For every polling station, we have five reps mm. from chairman to secretary to organizer, women organizer, yeah. every polling station. So 30,000 of them. And for each electoral area, we have almost 7,000 electoral areas. Each electoral area, we have a coordinator. Mm -hmm. So the politics is already down there. The only difference is election. Yeah. The only difference is campaigning during election time and then voting during election time. That is the only thing that is not down there. Mm -hmm. And they are not killing each other. It's just like saying that uh, um, there's chief transit dispute here. People have died through gunshots, through violence, etc. So we should abolish chief transit. Mm -hmm or we should not bring chieftains to a certain level. Or in the media, 
people are so reckless that they can bring war, so media is not useful for us. We can't make such statements. Okay. Let's look at the positive side of multi party democracy. Of course, criticize what we think is wrong and then see how we will reach it. But don't cut off a certain group. In which case, you say that as we speak now, even though we are practicing a multi party system, system yeah. down there is no party. Mm. Every person who goes to the assembly, which is more or less the local parliament, mm -hmm. is independent mm -hmm. or is supposed to be independent. To be, exactly. I've never seen anywhere where the people's representatives are all independent. If somebody decides to go independent, it's allowed. If he wins, he joins. Mm -hmm. But most representatives, by Belong what we have put... Yeah, they, they but do we, do we need it? I mean, are we not doing okay without necessarily having to elect... Uh, MMDC is on we, party We are not basis. doing okay for several reasons. Okay. For instance, are we having the best choice? Mm -hmm. If you look at the work of the assembly, it's not just a walk in the park. Okay. It's, if you look at the Constitution and Local Governance Act, there's so much they're supposed to do. And if their functions have, have been summarized into deliberative, executive, and legislative mm -hmm. functions. Yeah. So they even passed laws, even if it's bylaws. Mm -hmm. And as I speak, I can point to areas where you find maybe about eight people standing. And these eight people standing, let's say five belong to MPP, mm -hmm. three belong to NDC. So why couldn't we be given the opportunity for us to say that, no, we are picking one instead of five? Instead of five. Okay. Those, those, well, the three to pick one. Yeah. One, it cuts down cost. Two, it sanitizes the whole situation. Because as I sit here, I know those who are standing in particular electoral areas and their political backgrounds. Mm -hmm. some, of, some are even office holders. Yeah. As constituency chairman, constituency women organizer. Constituency, they are office holders and they are seeking to go to the assembly. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you are saying that don't send politics to the, to the local government level. Yeah. And even though they are party people and they are office holders, I cannot... But the party cannot insist that anybody should step down. Okay. The only thing the party can do is to persuade. Mm. Because the law says it's non-partisan. Okay. And they will tell you, ah, I'm not going on any particular, I'm going on my own. So I will decide whether I will step down or not. And it's chaotic. Yeah. It's, it's chaotic. I mean, we could streamline this, sanitize it, and it would become better for all of us. And when parties uh, get involved, they mobilize people. This 10 out of 25%, 35% will be a thing of the past. Mm. They mobilize people. They, they sell their ideas. They sell their views. They, they are manifest to make pledges and promises. Yeah. And, uh, to meet the needs of the people. And people come on board. But does it not bother you that day in, day out, the number of people who are campaigning for a no vote are increasing? I mean, aside the NDC, we've had well, there's some well, chaos I, in the I, National I, House of Chiefs. Um, you know, civil society organization, the Human Rights and Governance Center, they are calling for a cancellation of the referendum as well. Well, in the first place, those campaigning for no, they have an easier task. Mm. If they get 26%, no has won. Because for yes, you need 75%. Mm -hmm. So if you get 75 and no is 25, yes has won. Yeah. The moment no gets one more than a 25 it means that yes has failed, mm -hmm. even though yes had more votes. If yes gets seventy-four percent, yes still will not carry the exactly. day. Exactly. But yes would have shown that majority wants such a a position okay. or situation. Mm. So the yes campaign is easier. Two, as a Democrat, I don't see why I should even have been worried that some are saying yes and some are saying no. Is the numbers which will count? All right, but then yeah, if, they, if for they every keep saying no, then a lot more people will be convinced. No, you're saying no doesn't mean doesn't mean you are convincing anybody. Okay, you're saying no should be backed with. If we are saying ten reasons, we have twenty five reasons mm. why there should be yes. I can open it for you. Okay, but what I'm saying is that initially there was a certain kind of consensus. I mean, party leaders standing in front of churches and bishops, mm -hmm. and pledging that we all think that the time has come for us to change this situation. Yeah. So we are for yes. And then even in parliament, on the minority side, your key leaders 
all saying, saying that said, indeed yeah, yes so go the, ahead the, with it. the yeah. partisan thing is even more important than the two four three you want to amend mm -hmm. so let's do the referendum first yeah you understand so the initial consensus was making things quite easy mm -hmm. and clearer until the last moment when our friends from the other side said that they have been convinced it should be no. Yeah. So it makes it more difficult. But as I said, if it comes out, it's 70-30. No has won, but no, mm. no doesn't have the majority. Okay. You understand? Yeah. No has won, but it doesn't mean they it have doesn't the majority. It doesn't have the majority. Okay. You okay. understand? Okay. Mm -hmm. But the conversation also seems to be, a lot of people think, sway towards Article 55-3 instead of 24 uh, yes. three one because they think that the conversation should be rather more about you know uh, election of the MMDCs which demands a two thirds majority but we seem to have lost the focus and we're focusing more on the other one yesterday also Mr Johnson I in case here was here and he says that even though we're arguing for election on partisan basis and all of that we're forgetting something which is Article two four eight um, and I'll just read mm. that a bit it says that the candidate seeking election to a district assembly or any local level government uh, unit shall present himself to the electorate as an individual and shall not use any symbol associated with any political party. Now the two says that a political party shall not endorse, sponsor, offer a platform to or in any way campaign for or against a candidate seeking election to a district assembly or any local lower local government unit. And he says that we're talking about the other two, but we seem to have forgotten about Article 248. Well, well the... At every point in time, when we engage the public, mm. what we tell the public is that we have the pre-referendum activities and post-referendum activities. There are some things that we can do after the referendum. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if yes carries the day, it means 55-3 would have been amended. Yeah. That paves the way for you to amend 248. Two, four, eight. Okay. Well, if you don't wait for the referendum and you amend the 248, you would have amended it. Mm. It's not in the constitution now. Okay. But because 55 today still exist, you cannot operate mm -hmm. under the 248. Okay. Because 255 today tells you that political parties can mobilize, it can educate on social, economic, political, and do everything, including sponsoring candidates, mm -hmm. but not at the lower uh, local level. Local unit. level, okay. You understand? Okay. So if you remove the 248, and 55 three is intact. Political parties still cannot function or cannot sponsor candidates at the local level. Okay. I hope you follow what I'm yes, saying. Yes, I'm, I'm following. So you cannot make 248 a precondition. Okay. If Because the 248 is non entrenched. Mm -hmm. Non entrenched meaning that parliament by two thirds can amend can it. Can amend it, yes. But 55 three, you have to go to the people. So if parliament amends it, mm -hmm. and then there's still a provision in the constitution which stops you from operating and that one has to be amended by the people the electorate 4075 mm. that means you wouldn't have you would have achieved what you want to achieve so i don't see how that can be that a precondition so from, from where you sit it looks like then are you willing to even sit down and discuss the concerns that they with, have with, raised because from what i'm i'm seeing it looks like then is yes yes and we're not listening to anything else no not at all um the only challenge is that if you're not careful, you go back to the status quo, as it exists now. Assemblies, okay, go and do your lessons. Mm -hmm. um, Non-partisan, okay, the president still keeps his power, not, not to uh, to be able to appoint them MDCs. Yeah. That is a challenge we have. Mm -hmm. But as for engagement, we've engaged them so much that I'm even surprised. Mm -hmm. I have this IDEC document, yeah. which shows that even for those of us in parliament, to be able to arrive at a consensus mm -hmm. for the 2431 and for the 553 that we will hold the referendum on. Yeah. We, we came to a certain conclusion. And then IDEC even said that, having agreed, that is leadership of both sides, having agreed mm -hmm. on the way forward, we want to brief the leadership of your parties. And indeed, I'm aware that MPP was invited. The MPP agreed to all the issues and terms raised by NDC. Okay. Okay. As to whether NDC also met and agreed to their terms, I'm yet to know. Okay. But going forward, if we still have to engage NDC, I don't see anything wrong with it. Mm. Worst case scenario, the president comes out to say that 
I was hoping for consensus. I don't seem to see the consensus. So I'm asking this whole referendum thing to be put on hold. Mm -hmm. We move on. In any case, but we should count the cost. It's a fact that if we stop today, we should count the cost. One, the kind of um, education information that we have carried out since 2017. Mm -hmm. Two, at this late hour when the EC most probably would have printed everything. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Which In which case, the EC should see it as something. So it cannot be postponed? Well, so I said that it can be postponed, but we should count but the cost. We should, okay. We should not let the thing that is just uh, something that you can walk into a shop. Oh, I need this pen. You pay for it, you pick it. Okay. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And all along, <laughs> the EC, for instance, brought their regulations to Parliament. It stayed in Parliament for 21, 16 days. Mm -hmm. By 2nd August, the regulations had been passed. Okay. Based on that, the EC has carried on to do their procurement and everything. And as I speak, I believe that they've even printed the ballot papers. Because they have to print them early enough and send them to all the to districts. All the, okay. You understand? Okay. So if at the end of the day, the head of state, the, the head of our government, the mm -hmm. chief executive, says that having listened to all sides, let's postpone. Yeah. I'm saying that we all go along, but we should but know that we have incurred some cost. cost. All right. My time is up. I, I just need to ask you this quickly because the Afrobarometer showed that only about 50% of Ghanaians, um, you know, understand well, what the referendum was for. Are you okay well, believe, with the education so far? No, we could have been far better. And, so what and, are we and, doing about that it? That is why we are here. Mm. And for us, I've seen that when the issue is hot, that you even get the media attention. Mm. And then you also, when it, the event is also getting closer that you get people discussing it. Yeah. Because this discussion has been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's bits and pieces. Radio station will call you, and then you will tell him, oh, we went for a forum here. Yeah. This is what they said, a news press will report. And because it's getting closer now, there's more attention. Mm -hmm. And because there's some heat, because the media, you enjoy heat. <laughs> you don't enjoy winter Well, cold. there's been a need because people are saying they don't yes. understand. So we needed you to come no, in. No, not that people and don't understand, but the parties... Don't. The parties are, are saying yes and no. So bring no, them. not even that. But I can tell you for a fact that even when you sample opinions, they even ask you, what is this referendum about? Which is, that is why even for, the, for us to be, to be, to show that we, we want to be a bit neutral. Yeah. We have to fund the SEC. Mm. Go out and educate the people because it's your duty. Have they done a good job? Well, you we can't blame them because they also started late. And it's not their fault that they started so late. So it's the local government? No, not really. Because when you want to go and educate the people, you need the EC to have chosen the colors. Mm -hmm. And the colors came in September. Okay. You need the EC to be definite on the date of the referendum. Because initially, we were saying September, mm -hmm. it went to November, mm. it went to 10 December, and it's now 17, 17 December. Yeah. So, they needed to get all these things in place before they could also go all out. I see. Because uh, if you go to educate people and you don't know the color for yes or no, you don't know the date of the lessons, mm -hmm. you don't even then know the question. You can't move forward. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, you cannot blame them wholly for. All right. Well, they're saying vote yes. Um, 25 reasons. 25 reasons. I, I'm yet to find these 25 me, reasons. You have to share them with me. Let me share them uh, with So you. that I can share with our viewers much later yes. on. But yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Anubo Obi Amwa. He is the deputy local government minister and also MP for Ikapim South. You see how he's nodding. I said the, it's finally. The beautiful Ebrian. I know. Thank you so much for thank joining you. me on the nice show. Nice to meet you. And yes, there's